Hello, everybody, and welcome to OTR Tuesday. Uh, OTR Tuesday is something that I'm going to try to dedicate once a week. I may miss some weeks, but I'll do my best to sharing an episode from my old time radio library. If you're not familiar with this, if you're new to old time radio, old time radio is basically prior to the magic of the cathode ray and television being in every home. Uh, famous actors and not so famous local actors would gather in a studio with a sound effects man and musicians and an engineer and they would perform comedies and dramas and thrillers on the air often live and some of these survived because they were transcribed to disc while they were being broadcast so that they could be rebroadcast at a later time. So I have thousands of episodes. I don't have any original transcription discs, but over the years I've collected many, 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 many digital and analog files. So I'll be sharing some here. Uh, I figured I'd start it off with a celebrity that most people know, everybody that does know loves, and that is Mel Blanc. Mel Blanc was the voice of Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Foghorn Leghorn, Yosemite Sam, all of the Warner Brothers characters. And at the time that he recorded this show, actually, a little backstory. Before he did the show, he was in Portland when he was a young man, and he did uh, a live radio show that was 60 minutes long that he and his wife Estelle performed all the voices on. They became very famous in Portland, but they received very little pay, so he made his way to Los Angeles from there and just kept auditioning every two weeks for Warner Brothers until finally uh, somebody cast him. So, uh, years down the road, he's got this success in the cartoon industry, and he's performing regularly in backup parts on a lot of very famous radio shows. He's a regular on Jack Benny, on Burns and Allen, on Edgar Bergen, on Abbott and Costello, and they offered him his own radio show. So fun, fun little snippet on this. Uh, in, in the show, he was going to provide myriad voices, plus kind of play himself as the owner of a fix-it shop, or as they used to call it, but a hardware store. So his parents in real life were kind of bored and said they regretted that they had retired. So he said, well, let me buy you a little hardware store and we'll call it Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop, which was also the name of Mel Blanc's radio show. So as a result, uh, the Fix-It Shop became a real location that people could go to and people lined up around the block to meet the voice of Bugs Bunny. So he would go and hang out with his parents and hang out in the shop and meet kids whenever he had downtime, which with such a busy schedule doing cartoon voice work and movie work and uh, in radio, it probably wasn't a lot of time, but he did it as often as he could. And he had a reputation of just being an absolutely magical and amazing human being. So today I'm going to present an episode of Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. This is Theater of the Mind, so you're not going to see any images. There's absolutely no film footage of this here. Uh, it's, it's great that it has survived because the original radio show that he had, uh, which I think was called Cobwebs, and I, I can't remember the title of it, but at least Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop survives. And uh, so here's an episode. Enjoy. Powder presents the Mel Blanc Show, written by Mac Benoff, with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Hans Conried, Earl Ross, Jill Walker, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of the voice of Bugs Bunny. Mm. What's up, Doc? Yes, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath of sweet and deep sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mel playing his new character, Zookie. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Everybody. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Himself in person, Mel Blank. Hi, folks. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Teeth that sparkle and dazzle, a breath that's fresh and sweet, then try Colgate Tooth Powder. For the new, all-purpose Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your teeth and sweetens your breath. 
Yes, this new all-purpose tooth powder produces an amazingly rich, active foam that's marvelously effective. Every time you brush your teeth with this new all-purpose Colgate tooth powder, your whole mouth feels clean, sweet, fresh. Your teeth regain their natural sparkle. It's been proved in seven cases out of ten that Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And as for cleaning, you can depend on Colgate tooth powder revealing the natural brilliance of your teeth. Yes, Colgate tooth powder, the new all-purpose tooth powder, does everything you can expect or ask of a dentifrice. Try Colgate tooth powder today for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. In Mel Blanc's little town, the custom is that after the picture show, the younger set gathers in Blum's candy shop and talks about the picture. In one booth, we hear Ann White saying to her boyfriend, Oh, Jerry, did you notice anything different about the movies tonight? Uh, yeah, during one scene, Betty Davis didn't cry. And in another booth, Susan Adams is saying to her boyfriend, Henry, did you notice anything different about the movies tonight? Yeah, nobody got psychoanalyzed. And in another booth where Mel Blank and his girlfriend Betty Colby are sitting, Betty is saying, Oh, Mel, did you notice anything different about the movies tonight? Yeah, I paid for the tickets. <laughs> Actually, Betty was looking for an opening to bring up the matter of a June wedding. She soon found one, and like all women, brought it up in this subtle fashion. Gosh, Mel, we've been going together for five years. When are you going to pop the question? Oh, Betty, you know your father. If I pop the question, your pop will pop me. <laughs> Besides, we can't afford to get married. Mel, don't you want to have a home of your own and, and children of your own? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can go to the FHA for a home loan, but where can I go to borrow the kids? <laughs> oh, Betty, it's useless. Your father will never consent to our marriage. He slammed the screen door on me so many times, my face looks like a waffle baker. Well, I want you to ask him anyway. Oh, you know what he'll do? He'll just kick me out of the house. The last time he did, it cost me ten cents. How come? Well, he was wearing his spiked golf shoes, and he punched a hole in my trolley car transfer. <laughs> no use, Betty. But, Mel, you make no attempt to get on the right side of Father. Why don't you do just one thing that he'd like? Nothing doing, Betty. I'm too young to die. <laughs> Besides, I've always tried to help him out in his supermarket. Whose idea was it to put black lace panties on the lamb chops to attract the men customers? And I gave him the idea he ever had. What was that? Painting his thumb red so it wouldn't be noticed with a hamburger on the meat scale. <laughs> Mel, this is a very good time to ask Father. He's in his best mood today. Someone's coming to buy a supermarket at a big profit for Father. Well, I I'm afraid. Oh, Mel Blank, where's your get up and go? It laid down and died. <laughs> but, Betty, I'll do it for you. I'll go see your father at the supermarket right away. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Colby. Mr. Colby, I... Mr. Mean... Blank, you idiot. You practically ruined my supermarket. What did you do to this cash register I gave you to repair? Well, gosh, Mr. Colby, I was fixing a slot machine at the same time. I may have gotten the parts mixed up. A slot machine? No wonder every time a woman brings three plums to the counter, the cash register pays her eight nickels. <laughs> well, don't worry, Mr. Colby. The odds are still against the customer. Huh? Well, Blank, there's no excuse for being an idiot. That's fine, Mr. Colby. Then you don't have to make any apologies. I, uh, Mr. Colby, I came down to ask you if I could marry Betty. And if you let us get married, we'll name the first child after you. Well, that's a nice name for a kid. Arf, Blank. <laughs> Junior. Oh, why, oh, why, why bother about you? I've got bigger troubles right now. What's the matter, Mr. Colby? Well, I'm supposed to sell my supermarket to the owner of a big grocery chain. And I thought I'd have it repainted to make it look more attractive. But the painter's cost is outrageous. He wants to charge me an arm and a leg. Gee, the president asked everyone to cut prices. He ought to just charge you a leg. <laughs> well, it's plenty depressing. Seems I've had nothing but trouble lately. Sometimes I think that I haven't got a friend left in the world. But if I die, nobody'd put 
flowers on my grave. Don't say that, Mr. Colby. I'd be glad to put flowers on your grave. Oh, I... No, I didn't mean it that way. Say, I've got an idea. I'll paint your supermarket. What? Oh, I'll start right away and I'll do a good job. Didn't I paint your car last year? Yes, and I remember the job you did. You painted it all yellow. Everyone thought it was a taxi cab. Oh, so humiliating. How much did you make? About $95. Never mind! <laughs> Mr. Colby, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll paint your supermarket for nothing. Why, you jack... uh, You jack of all trades. Well, well, my boy, you can do it uh, for nothing. Mr. Colby, it's as good as done. I'll get my assistant, Zuki, and as soon as you close up the supermarket for the day, we'll start painting. Uh, gee, um, uh, Mel sent me over here to start painting the, the supermarket, but uh, I don't know anything about b- 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 painting. <laughs> uh, the, the, this bucket is too thick. I'll, I'll stir the lead. Uh, uh, I'll put the. Uh, I'll add the turpentine. Turpentine. Uh, I'll add the turpentine. Uh, I'll add the turpentine. 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 Hello there, Zuki. I just stopped by to see how things were going. Well, thanks, Mr. Colby. Co- 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 B. Thanks, Mr. B. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see what you've done. Zuki, what are you doing to my supermarket? Oh, I'm painting it, Mr. Colby. What kind of blue did you use? It's a, 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 a California... Be, 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 California... Be, 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 be. <laughs> Smog. <laughs> well, I never saw anything so atrocious in my life. What kind of color combination is that on the ceiling? Well, it's it's green, red, and blue, 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 black. Uh, it's yellow, yellow, black, and blue. Well, we, well, uh, well, uh, it, it's purple, orange, and the. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm colorblind. <laughs> when I get hold of Mel, I'll break every bone in his body. Meanwhile, get that brush and cover the blue. Use amber. <whistles> oh, not that amber. <laughs> This is terrible. Give me that phone, Zuki. I'll call that Mel and really tell him what I think of. Hello, Mel Blank's fix-it shop. You bend it, we mend it. Mel Blank, you idiot. You sent Zuki down here and he's ruined the place. Oh, Mr. Colby, the paint job can't be that bad. It can't. You know the bird's eye food I sell? Yeah? Well, the birds just closed their eyes. (laughs) I told Zuki I wanted one of the walls plastered. Well, what'd he do? He poured two quarts of Kentucky Tavern over it. Well, Mr. Colby, I'll be right down to fix it. You come down here and I'll break you in two. Okay, then both of us will be down. Goodbye. Gosh, I better get down there. Hello, hello, Mel, Mel, old boy. Well, hello, Hartley. <laughs> Gosh, is it drizzling out again? No, Mel, it's merely thousands of women drooling because they've just seen great big, adorable me. In fact, Mel, old boy, I'm such a darling champ, I could put out the lights and sit on my lap. Ah! Ah! Look, Hartley, I've got to be going, but I can't take this. You must think you're the most beautiful man in the world. Mel, you've heard the saying, beauty is only skin deep? Yeah. Well, I'm the only man in the world made entirely out of skin. <laughs> Hardly. What makes you think you're so wonderful? Mel, old boy, that's what I'm told. In a recent survey, it was definitely proved that although doctors preferred camels, the nurses preferred me. <laughs> In fact, at the nurses' college, I was voted the man most likely to be fluoroscoped. <laughs> Hardly, how can you make up such wild stories? Hey, come on. Well, last week, the fashion editor of the magazine, Debutante, came to me and said, Who is the most beautiful, most ravishing creature in the world? I want that glamorous person to pose for an ad. What'd you do? What could I do? I posed. (laughs) And when the editor looked at me, he just stood there and said, Quote, unquote. But he didn't say anything. Naturally, Mel, I'm too beautiful for words. Wait until you see me in my next ad. I'm posing in a Van Heusen shirt. I can see why, Hartley. From the front, you look like a Heusen, and from the back, you look like a van. (laughs) Oh, Mel, you...
you befuddle me. In fact, I'm so B I could fuddle. <laughs> so it gives me great pleasure to tell you that because of the way you messed up that painting job in Mr. Colby's supermarket, <coughs> Betty is giving you the brush. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> when the girls heard this, they cried, but I'm going to be my own June bride. So long, Will. I sing me. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Gosh, not only am I in trouble with Mr. Colby, but now Betty is mad at me. Well, I'm going right down to Colby's supermarket and face him. Well, go ahead, Blank. Are you a scared rabbit? Who, me? Me. What's up, Doc? teeth and a breath that's sweet. Isn't that what you want? What everyone wants? Good. Try Colgate Tooth Powder, the all-purpose tooth powder. Its lively, rich foam bubbles around your mouth, leaves your breath so fresh and sweet. In seven cases out of ten, it's been proved that Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And when it comes to cleaning your teeth, Colgate all-purpose tooth powder gives dazzling results. Yes, Colgate Tooth Powder reveals the natural brilliance of your teeth. So for teeth that sparkle naturally and a breath that's sweet, try Colgate Tooth Powder. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Now here's a tune you should remember. Victor Miller and his orchestra play Cecilia. <laughs> Colby as a buyer for his supermarket, so Mel, in an effort to help him repaint the place so that it would look nice, sent Zuki over. But Zuki did such a bad job that Mr. Colby threatened to break every bone in Mel's body. Is our hero Mel afraid? Is he hiding out somewhere? No. Right now he's in his fix-it shop making plans about the Colby matter. Shh. He's on the phone. Hello? American Airlines? When does the next plane leave for Brazil? <laughs> It's all filled, huh? Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, do you have to take so many coffee pots? <laughs> well, what's available? Well, only Siam, but the trip must be necessary. Oh, oh, just a minute. Someone else wants to talk to you. Oh, hello, American Airlines. Uh, the King of Siam is expecting me. I must go at once to see the King of Siam. Uh, who this? Uh, this is Anna. <laughs> Hmm. 
They hung up. Gosh, what am I going to do? Oh, here comes my lodge president, Mr. Cushing. Maybe he can help me out. Hello, Mel. <laughs> Greetings, mighty potentate. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. What's the matter, Mel? You look worried about something. Oh, Mr. Colby is mad at me because he says Zuki made his supermarket look like a horrible eyesight and a disgraceful mess. Well, what's he complaining about? I've been married to one for years. <laughs> Oh, there you go about your wife again. Mel, she's still arguing. She's always complaining. The other day we had an argument and she said, John, you're slowly digging my grave. What'd you say? Nothing. I went out and bought a steam shovel. (laughs) You know, Mel, when I married my wife, her eyes were like two limpid pools. And now? Well, they're still like two pools, but her nose is like the diving board. <laughs> you know, her nose is so long that for years, no one ever noticed that she had two front teeth missing. <laughs> but this morning, she forgot to put on her makeup. Mel, she's got so many lines in her face, it looks like the score pad in a gin rummy game. <laughs> oh, your wife isn't that bad. <laughs> Hello, Mel. Well, there are two, there are many different kinds of perfume. <laughs> For instance, there's Chanel number five, Irresistible number seven, Temptation number nine. Well, I put one out for my wife. What's the name? Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> what a woman. Last Sunday, we went out to the beach and she got coy with me. She said, oh, John, let's play a game. John, bury me in the sand. Come on, John, bury me. Gad, what a temptation. Well, right now, mighty potentate, your worries are small compared to mine. If only there was some way I could improve the looks of Colby's supermarket. Well, very often, Mel, a person thinks something looks beautiful because he's been talked into it. My wife's father developed lockjaw, convincing me. (laughs) But how can I talk Mr. Colby into it? He'll break my arm if I even come near the place. The man who wants to buy the supermarket is coming tonight. Well, wait a minute, Mel. Why talk to Colby as yourself? Put on a smock and a false mustache and go as a French interior decorator. (laughs) Yeah. I can take off the hat I'm wearing and put on a beret. Say, that's a great idea. Thanks, Mighty Potentate. Well, I'm glad to be of assistance. Well, Mel, i got to be going now. Uh, where are you going, Mighty Potentate? Well, Mel, I can do one of two things. I can go to the movies and see the farmer's daughter, or I can go home and look at the cow I married. <laughs> was a wonderful idea the mighty potentate gave me. Now to get the costume and pretend to be a French interior decorator. I don't know, Mr. Colby. So far, you've shown nothing to make me want to buy this supermarket. Even if I were interested, the ridiculous color scheme would frighten me off. How did you paint these walls? By throwing eggs into an electric fan? (laughs) But, Mr. Ross, this place is a gold mine. Now, I have some business secrets. Business secrets? Yes, but wait a minute. Who is this odd-looking chap in the beret entering? Uh, Pardon me. I happen to be strolling by, and I could not help but admire this beautiful place. Uh, May I come in? Oh, yes, of course. I notice by your accent you're French. Well, as you say in France, bonjour, mon ami. As we answer in France, crepes aux à la carte. <laughs> Pardon me, did I hear you say this supermarket was beautiful? Oui, but oui. And who ought to know more than I? For I am the famous French interior decorator, Pierre Hitler. <laughs> Pierre Hitler. That's an odd name. An eclair is something that has a soft custard filling. It is mushy inside. Well, we all can't have big morsels. <laughs> ah, how I hated to leave France and my family. You know my sister, he is in France. 
My brother, she is in France. <laughs> what about your parents? My parents, it has taken a trip to England. <laughs> Most of all, I miss my girlfriend, Ivan. Ah, they is beautiful. <laughs> I can just see her now. She lived on the bank of the river. Same? No, but I had a lot of fun with her anyway. <laughs> I came here to decorate some big homes in Hollywood. I just finished the furniture for Rita Aworth. Does she have nice upholstery? Are you kidding? <laughs> ah, this place is the most beautiful I have ever seen. And I know, for I have painted most everything. The Eiffel Tower, the Place de Opera, the Rue de la Paix. Rue de la Paix? That's a street. Do you paint streets? Only the white line. <laughs> But in France, we have a marvelous system for painting white lines. What is it? We let a good humor man ride down the middle of the street with his vanilla dragging. <laughs> and to make a green line, we do the same thing, only we use pistachio. <laughs> One week on the Rue de la Paix, we had thousands of flat tires. How did that happen? Too much nuts in the burnt almond. <laughs> You sound convincing, Mr. Eclair, but I think this supermarket was painted by a moron. Oh, no, Mr. Colby had nothing to do with it. What? Why, did... Why did you, Mel Black? Please, Mr. Colby. Mel Black, hey. I'm going to break I... every point. I... Gosh, Betty, I never do anything right. Your father will never let us get married. Well, Mel, let's elope. Elope? Gosh, Betty, you and I married. Yes. I can just picture our first child. He'll take after both of us. Yeah. The looks will be Colby and the brains will be blank. <laughs> I, I mean, the brains will be Colby and the looks will be blank. Hmm. Either way, that kid is behind the eight ball. <laughs> This is Mel Blank saying thanks for listening. Good night, and the 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 the. That's all, folks. This is Bud Houston reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blank Show every Tuesday night at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blank's Fix It Shop. <laughs>